stretch my hand to thee, for there is uh, no other that I know. Uh, thank you, Brother Todd, amen, and all of those who have uh, been a part of our service thus far. Uh, I want to uh, take this time just to wish all of the fathers, amen, who are listening a happy Father's Day, amen. There is a difference in being a father and a baby daddy. Amen. So I thank God for the fathers. Amen. Not just, amen, the ones that are on her now, but the ones who came before and the ones who came before them to lay the foundation uh, that we stand on uh, on this very day. Um, let us bow our heads a word of prayer. Father God, Lord, we come thanking you for this day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for all of your provisions and your blessings. We come to you right now asking you, Father God, just to touch right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to, as I prepare to stand, Heavenly Father, Lord, and to proclaim thy word, to move me out of the way, Lord. I ask you to, uh, Father God, decrease me that thou may increase, Lord. Allow, Heavenly Father, Lord, these words to be your words, Heavenly Father, Lord. Allow these words to go out and to strengthen us as believers, that we may continue to tell a dying world that we do serve a living Savior. But we do ask you, Father, if it's someone in the midst who may be listening, Lord, who don't know you, in the pardon of their sins, that the Spirit may prick their heart with the word that they came running, asking, what must I do to be saved? We'll be careful to point them to your doctor, Jesus die for our sins, but we thank you, Father, that you got him out of the grave, that we may be justified in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I have a passage of scripture, a familiar passage of scripture, found uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 22, verses 1 through 3, and then we're going to pick up verses 10 through 13, that's Genesis chapter 22, uh, starting at verse number one, going to the third verse, and then picking up at the 10th verse to the 13th verse. Um, I'm gonna encourage you, amen, in your private study to uh, read this chapter, amen, that you may get an understanding that I might not bring out to you today uh, in the sermon. Um, Genesis chapter 22, uh, verses one through three, it says, and it came to pass after these things uh, that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, 
and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell the earth. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. I want y'all to hear that. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Verse number 10 picks up and it says, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he says, Here am I. He said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thickle by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Just for a few moments this morning, I want to uh, challenge us from the question, what are you withholding from God? Yes, what are you withholding from God? Church, there, there are some things in this world, uh, rather they be people or possessions that we hold very dear to us. Yeah, we we will move, we'll move, we'll move for, for those things when we won't move for anything else. Yeah, they, 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 there are some things, uh, rather they be people or possessions that hold a special place in our heart. Yeah, we, we would do anything to help assist, fix, heal, or mend these things. Yeah, we, we, we go out of our way, regardless of the circumstances surrounding their issues, to do all that we can to make things better. These things, church, rather uh, people or possessions, uh, can oftentimes blind us from the truth. Many, many a relationship have been tried and some even broken because of the value we have on the things that we hold dear to us. Yeah, our, our, our spiritual relationship can can be burdened and even tested when we start to put people or possessions before God. Yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Yeah, we, we, must, we, must, we must be very, very careful because the Lord will move some stuff. Amen, that's very, dear to us if it's blocking our view of him. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus said you you can't have two masters. I know, I know I'm one. I like to have my cake and I, I love to eat it too. Amen. But when you have two masters, Jesus said you're gonna love one and hate the other. Yeah, yeah. When when it comes when it comes to our our spiritual relationship. Amen. We have to be willing to, to give God our undivided. 
have to be inclined, church, to, to give God our all and all at a moment's notice. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 must, be, we must be willing to, to sell out for the cause of Christ, no matter the cause. So, so I asked the question this morning, what, what are we withholding from God? Yeah, in, in the text this morning, we, we see that something has transpired uh, because of how the first verse starts off. It says, uh, and it came to pass after these things. Yeah, the story, the story behind these things is, is, is that Abraham was promised a son. Uh, uh, but but, but there, was, there was a pause in the process of the promise. And, and, and it was during it was during the pause, amen, that, that Abraham's house became dysfunctional because he began to do things according to his own ideas and, and not on the ideas and precepts of God. As fathers, as fathers, if if we desire our homes, amen, to have order instead of chaos. Uh, as fathers, if we if we wish to have peace and and not confusion, love and not animosity, we must be willing to stick to God's plan and during the pause. After 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 these things, the text says, "Yeah, the, the promise the promised son had had been given to Abraham and Sarah, just like God." said he would. And I'm going to throw this in real quick. God is no short than his word. He will deliver no matter what he promised you, no matter what circumstances surrounding the issues of around the promise. God is a deliverer. But oftentimes, you know, we, we get so so excited and, and so enthusiastic. Amen. When God delivers on his promise that we start to put our focus on the blessing more than the blesser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many, many, many of us, yeah, we, we, we spent so, so much time with what we have been given that we start to neglect the one who gave it. We, 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 get, so, we get so caught up, amen, with the newness of what we have uh, that we start to forget about who's been there providing for us all along. A lot of times when I was young, amen, and I would get a new toy, I would, I would play with that toy, I would play, I would play, I would play, I would play, and then I would get a new toy. And then I would put that toy to the back burner. And I'm afraid today a lot of us, because God has blessed us, we have began to put him on the back burner, and we spend more time focusing on the new, mm, the new tool. Yeah. So, so, so to avoid to avoid any any type of misunderstanding. Yeah. There are times when God has to confirm our faith. Can can I can I can I tell you something this morning, Bethesda? Every 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 time something happens in our lives that's not according. Huh, to our plan, it ain't always the end. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that sink in a little bit. I said, every time something happens that's not according to our, our plan, yeah, it's, it's not always, it's not always the end. I know, I know, I know we like to put a lot of our issues on the devil. We like to put a lot of our problems and our storms and our trials and tribulations on the devil, but sometimes, amen, a confirmation is taking place. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you thought, you thought, you thought that that storm, amen, that you've been been dealing with all week long uh, was the enemy messing with you, but in reality, it was God confirming, confirming your faith. I got to be transparent this morning when, when my wife was pregnant with my daughters and they had to get hospitalized and they had to deal with surgeries and the complications that, that all surrounded. I thought the enemy was trying to shake me, y'all, but, but in reality, it was God. God 
was confirming, hmm, confirming my faith. Yeah, you, you, you see, it's important. It's important to know who it is. Yeah, in order, and in order for us to know who it is, we must be in a position, yeah, to where we can answer God when he calls. Pastor, I'm reminded, I'm reminded it was in the cool of the day. Amen. That, 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 that God called Adam. And the Bible says he hid himself. Yeah, he, he couldn't answer God because he wasn't in the right position. If, if we want, as fathers, if we want stronger homes, we need to be in the right position. If we want our children to be better, if we want our daughters to be respected and our sons to be protected, we got to be a man in the right position. Yeah, if we want our communities to be all that they can be, we as fathers must be in the right position. Jesus, Jesus said, if you abide in me hmm, and my words abide in you, you shall ask, what ye will, and it shall be done. The right position in the text, God called Abraham by name. And we see, amen, that he was on good speaking terms with God. He was in the right position because he answered, behold, here I am. Church, I, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how, how important it is, uh, especially to us as fathers, you know, to know who we are talking. I don't know, Pastor uh, Reverend Price, I don't know if it, if, if it ever happened to you, amen, but, but, but have you ever had somebody call you, amen, and, and, and you, really, you really didn't know who it was, and, and you was embarrassed to ask because you didn't want them to know that you didn't know who they was, and so you start playing the guessing game, amen, you start drawing out the conversation, hoping that you can recognize or catch the voice, Amen. You, you draw out the conversation, hoping that they can say something that will give you some type of revelation into, into who they are. Yeah, yeah. Some, some of us, some of us, we, we hear his voice. But because we are not on good speaking terms with him, we can't recognize who we're talking to. Hmm. I hope I'm helping somebody besides myself today, yeah. But, but, but Abraham, Abraham, he, he knew who he was talking to because of the intimacy of his relationship with the Father. Yeah, God, God, God said to Abraham, take, take your son. Yeah, your, 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 your only son Isaac, whom, whom you love. And I want you to give him to me for a burnt offering. Huh. Has, 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 God, has God ever asked you to give up something? Mm. Rather, uh, people or possessions that you, that you really, really love? God, God told Abraham uh, at the beginning of his ministry, get from around your family and your kinfolk and go to a land that I will show you. Yeah, has, has God, has God ever, ever called you as fathers to the carpet and requested something from you that you never thought that you would have to part ways with? The rich man, the rich man said to Jesus, I, I've kept all of your commandments from my youth until now. What, what do I lack that I may gain eternal, eternal life? Jesus says, sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Take up your cross and follow me. And the text says, amen, that he went away sad and upset because he had a lot of stuff. Yeah, what, what happens? Yeah, when our love for the things that we have been blessed with uh, 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 conflicts with the love of the blesser of the things. What, what, what happens? What happens, men, when, 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 when our joy for the blessing conflicts with the true source of our, our joy? Yeah, 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 the text, the text, the text. The text says that Abraham, he, he got up early in the, in the morning. 
and, and gathered every, everything he needed, including his son Isaac, and went to the place that God had instructed. I want y'all to pray for me right now because I'm about to get a little messy. No, nowhere, 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 nowhere in the text, Pastor, does it say that Abraham hesitated. Nowhere in, 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 in the text uh, that he, amen, uh, lallygagged uh, about doing what God had asked him to do. Uh, the scripture says that he arose early in the morning. Yeah, as, as, as fathers, as fathers, we, we can't allow ourselves to delay when it comes to acting on behalf of God's word. Mm, I want y'all to hear me today, fellas. We can't delay, amen, when God has put us to task to go and carry out his week. Our sons are going to jail at an alarming rate because as fathers, we hesitate. Our daughters are looking for love in all the wrong places because as fathers, we are hesitating. Our black women are stressed out because they gotta be mama and daddy because fathers, we are, we hesitate. There needs to be a high level of urgency when we are about our father's, father's business. Yeah, he, 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 he didn't, he didn't, he didn't hesitate, amen. Another, another thing I picked up, Brother Mac, out of, out of the verse was uh, Abraham didn't have a family need. Abraham didn't, didn't gather everybody together to tell uh, what he was about to do. The text has to never, never said that he had a discussion with his wife, Sarah, about what was about to take place. I find, amen, uh, Brother McCormick, he, he didn't even leave a note. Yeah, yeah, he, he, didn't, he didn't even leave a note. But it says that he gathered all that was needed, including his son Isaac, and went to a place that God would show him as far. If our families see the close relationship we have with God, amen, we won't have to say where we're going every time we leave the house. I'm going to let that sink in. I know, I know, I know some of y'all like, well, he better tell me where he's going. Yeah, out of courtesy, out of courtesy and, and respect, we may tell you where we're going, amen, just for, for safety purposes. But can I tell you something? When God has instructed us to do something, mm, it ain't taking no meeting, it ain't taking no vote. It's time to get out and, and go. Here, I, I noticed, I noticed Deacon Dozier, he didn't have to say anything because his close relationship with God did all the talking for him. Yeah, yeah, you, you see, you see, you see. Because of his, his close relationship with the heavenly father. Yeah, yeah, his wife, Sarah, she, she knew that Abraham was walking in some ordered steps. Woo, y'all don't hear me this morning. And, and, and wherever, wherever he was going, amen, and whatever he was, he was doing, he was doing it in some ordered steps. And, and she knew, amen, that if he was going in some ordered steps, that all things work together for the good. Woo! To them that love him and are called according to his purpose. He was going in some ordered. Some ordered. Some ordered steps. As he, as he stretched forth, he stretched forth his hand. The angel of the Lord. This is what most theologians call a theophany, a, a pre-Bethlehem appearance of Jesus the Christ. Yeah, he, he said to Abraham, do, do the lad no harm, for I see that you are willing to, to give your only son. Mm. 
Yeah, and, and you have not withheld uh, thy son from me. And, 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 and as Abraham, a man started to, to look around, he saw that it was a ram caught in the bush. You see, church, a sacrifice still had to be made. Yeah, for, for without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad uh, that one day when I was on my way to a burning hell, yeah, the <coughs> Father, mm, he sent his very best. Yeah, the Father didn't withhold from me, uh, but he gave his only begotten full of grace and truth. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that it's truth, amen, has the power to free men, women, boys, and girls from the bondage of sin. I'm so glad that his grace can heal all manner of disease. I'm so glad that one Friday evening he took my place out on a hill called Calvary. Nails, they put them in his hand. Rivets, they drove them on his feet. They hung him high and stretched him wide. I'm so glad that God didn't withhold from me. He hung out on that old rugged cross in my stead, in my place, till the sun refused to shine and the moon begin to drip down in blood. He hung out to the earth, begin to reel and rock like a drunken man. I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad. He died. He died in my place. Laid him in a bar of tomb. Stay there all that Friday. Stay there all that Saturday. But early, early, bright early, Sunday morning, he got up, power, all oh, power in his hands, power to fix my home, power to touch my children, power to heal my wife, power. He didn't, he didn't withhold anything from us. He gave his very best. All he is asking is that we don't withhold anything from him. Our heavenly father set the example <clears throat> of how a father should be to his wife. How a father should be to his children. How a father should be to his community. He said in his word that God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He said that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. He said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Can I tell you something this morning? If you don't know him in the pardons of your sin, you're in a backsetting state. You know what God really wants? He wants you. He don't want you to withhold yourself from him. Because he said, I came to give life and give life more abundantly. He don't want you scrapping and scraping and making. He wants you to show, amen, what kind of father he is. He wants you to show that he is a provider, that he is a way maker, that he is a deliverer, he is a healer, he is a bond breaker. He is the God of God, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. We're there, you don't have to come by a Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Uh, you can come by letter. Don't matter how you come. Just don't withhold what God is. He said, I want you a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He wants to show the world through us what kind of dad he is. Would there be one today? Oh, yeah. For me, yeah. 
for me. You are a testament. You may be able to direct you in there. What God has for me, it is for me. What God has for me, it is for me. I know what thou down. You know, you have brought me out. What God has for me, it is for me. It is for me. It is for me. I know what I doubt. Jesus, you brought me out. What God has for me, it is for me. Let the church say amen. Again, we want to wish that you get prepared for our time and also we want to uh, wish all